you passed your luck check. It's the No Class Podcast. With your hosts, Eddie and Matt. So what's up, Matt? Just living the dream, brother. Living the dream. And you? Living. Living. Easy living. Living is easy. Yep, yep. So what do you want to tell them about? Well, let's start out controversial. Let's do it. Okay. All right. This means the new TSR. Yeah, the new TSR. TSR games. number three. Yep. Um, so, yeah, there was the original TSR. And then I guess a, while, a few years ago, someone bought the rights that was doing a revamp of uh, oh, a top secret, I think. And then they let the license lapse. And so somebody else scooped it up. Anyway, and so they've just recently started promoting themselves, this new TSR, and it has been an adventure in itself. A brouhaha. Yeah. And so anyway, I really don't know nearly enough about this to comment. Don't let that stop you. I know. It never has before, right? Anyway, what, one thing I'll say is um, I, I don't, I didn't hear the podcast he was on where Ernie Gygax was supposed to have said some things that were questionable. And I don't doubt that he did, and particularly because this morning I saw on Facebook, because he and I are Facebook friends, that he issued somewhat of an apology, if not definitely an explanation. Well, this is news to me. I didn't know he had done anything. See, I figured, boom, you kind of flat foot me sometimes. So I thought, that, you know, I'd mention that. Well, okay. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so he essentially kind of explained. So you don't know what he said, but he is taking it back. Yeah, he well, he basically he's walking back from it a little he, bit at he, least. He's, he's sort of pausing and or at least explaining where he was coming from because I know this is hard to believe, but things get taken out of context or blown out of proportion, or people. But take you a don't sound. know or aren't going to tell us what the actual comment is. Well, basically, uh, I think he had made comments that people construed as this new TSR was uh, not inclusive. People at least oh. took it that way, whether that's what he meant or not. And then, of course, in this day and age, if you even a whiff of disinclusion or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Or if the sky's blue that day or whatever, I mean, people are going to want to pounce. And then people like drug his dad into it, which is really tacky. And, of course, some people took the bait, which I'm not saying it was him or this L La NASA guy or something. But anyway, they took the bait from the people that love to troll. And then it just it spiraled into negativity. And I mean, the whole thing has been cast in what is a pretty bad light right now. And it's bad enough they've been banned from Gen Con. Did you know that? Wow. Yeah, as of this morning. Yeah, this is getting, it's getting real. It's getting stupid. Wild. It's getting stupid, yeah. But I mean, it's like, ask me why I'm not on Twitter. From everything I've heard, it's just a great big toxic fly-ridden pile of crap. And Facebook's kind of, if it's not already there, it's headed that way where... You know, there's people on both sides of this that are getting really worked up, and I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough about it to really form an opinion, and plus, you don't want to hear my opinion anyway. But but it's just that, because I'll say this, we've met Ernie, and even though it was briefly, he seemed like a really nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's very great. gracious, very charming, very nice. Would you, I mean, on our brief meeting. No, 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 no. Ernie's great. Yeah, it's just... Yeah. I uh, probably a week ago when we were talking about the new TSR yeah. uh, between ourselves, not on the podcast. Yeah. It was like, oh, that might be good, but, but their visionary CEO, which is that Lanasa or whatever, however you pronounce it, he's not, I don't know. He's just, it doesn't matter what you say. He'll come at you, bro. Yeah. So it not like this was like, we weren't being inclusive. It was like, Hey, uh, I'm not going to support your company until I actually start seeing you guys come out with products. Yeah. And then he would attack them and call people names. And that's just juvenile. So if you're starting a business and you're trying to sell stuff to people, <laughs> maybe you should consider dialing. He's back. no salesman. Yeah, that's for sure. Sure. And then it was like, how many people do you think play RPGs? Right. If you say there's 10 million people. And of that 10 million. And of that... How many of them that just play RPGs, how many of them play D&D? &D? Yeah. So, okay, maybe 8 million or something. Yeah. And how many are these, old These schoolers? are just example numbers. But, yeah. yeah, if you get down to, like, who plays old school OSR games, mm -hmm. I don't think you'd have a million, but I could be wrong. But even if you did, okay, the first thing I'm going to do to introduce myself to you mm -hmm. is insult you all. Yeah, well, that's, that's dumb. 
and and a lot of the, I don't know this is part of it, but everything has to be you know political nowadays, and you have to pick a side, and it just it just gets well. This tedious. is before it was political. Oh sure, sure. With no politics included, this guy was just a jerk. He's just a jerk. And no, I don't. Or I don't, he seems that. Well, way. I don't doubt it. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, but yeah, he's a jerk. Yeah. And so what I'll say is what's sad though is is that people are throwing shade at like Ernie. And, uh, and I, I will say he maybe deserves some of that because of some stuff he might've said on a podcast, but part of it is because he's included in with this guy lumped in. And also one of their first games, this guy was touting was, uh, giant lands that James Ward did. Um, and, but James Ward is quick to come out and distance himself from the guy saying, Hey, I did this work two years ago before slowly, but surely everybody is coming out and distancing themselves from, from this because of Luke Gygax, yeah. the same also said, I'm not, Gary Kahn is not, no other guy Gax except yeah. Ernie yeah. is involved with this. And even then, like I said, Ernie came out today with a statement, you know. So, I mean, yeah, it sounds like this guy is toxic probably and everyone's distancing themselves. From NTRPG him. Con has kicked them off, kicked him off the Facebook or blocked him, however and you want to say it. says something because there are people on there that are so freaking obnoxious that I've blocked them on Facebook because I'm tired of their spam and their just rambling bullshit or whatever so and they are the old school yeah so i'm just saying if this guy Once got, you've annoyed those guys yeah yeah, yeah if, if you burn if, all your bridges yeah, down, if yeah. you've annoyed those guys where they banned you you really have to be a, a shit bird and you're really i mean if you wanted to go after people and say like fifth edition is the dumbest game if you play fifth edition you're dumb okay if you're trying to sell osr stuff fine you can do that you've disenfranchised all your 5e people yeah. they'll never buy anything from you but uh -huh. at least you've kept your osr crew yeah. Now you're going to come right in and start with them. I mean, that's your target audience. Demographic, yeah. And you're just going to start by yeah. insulting them I think and this, trying to start flame wars and all those yeah. terms. This guy probably is one of the people I talk about that have, a, have has a lot of dollars but no sense. But anyway, well. Yeah, I think they're also with the ones doing the TSR Museum too, right? Yeah, sadly, I think they're involved. And see, what's his name? Leeson is actually like the what would you call him, the curator or manager or something there? So, again, we've met him. He seems like a really nice guy. So it's just sad that these guys, unfortunately, are associated with this guy who's making them look, by association, you know, kind of jerky. Because yeah, I, I was excited about the museum. Yeah, I was reading that a lot of the old school guys that are running games at the museum aren't getting very much of a cut out of that big price that you have to pay a game there, too. Oh, I don't doubt it. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, again, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head, and I'm not just being agreeable. This guy sounds like a like a, an arch turkey jerk shitbird. So um, that's us, folks. You can always count on us to stand against obvious jerks. Exactly. Once you've proven well, yourselves we, a jerk, we will also agree with that. Once everyone else has sounded off, we'll <laughs> come right behind and chime in. But, no, I mean— We will also point fingers. But, I mean, I've been known—like I said, I am I'm, uh, was quick to, uh, to defend Ernie just now, and not everybody is. So, And don't get me wrong. I mean, like, me and Ernie aren't, like, lifelong jumps or something. But just from, from we've had some interactions with him literally for in, in person. We were invited to his home. And we didn't even like, hey, buddy, can we come over? I mean, he was like, hey, y'all guys, come super on over. Super sweet. Just a really super nice guy. And he was like, well, I can't have y'all leave empty-handed. And we're, we weren't fishing for stuff. And he's... And we're always just, fishing for stuff, I'm sad to say. I'm always fishing for something, because if you know me. So, I mean, no, he was just super nice, super generous, affable, charming, sweet. His you know, guy just beat cancer. I mean... he's good. As, he was good as gold to us. That's yeah. all I can tell you. And again, I can only speak from like, our experience. And we talked about this. Someone was attacking his dad. And again, Gygax said something one time 50 years ago. Okay, everybody, you're out there. You, at some point, you put your foot in your mouth or said something when you were, you need a Snicker bar and you regretted it later because you're a damn human being. It's like overall, there's not a pattern of Gygax being some jerk, at least I'm aware of. But he said something once. That Send could be, your letters to you. That could be construed as misogynistic or whatever. Okay, you know, it was a different time and it was one thing. And, you know, I don't know, man, but like... Anyway, I'm not saying just because he's the beloved co-creator of D&D &D that he's bulletproof, you can't touch him. But if you want to fault, fine. You can find fault in anybody. That's all I'm going to say. I'm done with that. All right. Well, the blood pressure meter that we've got you attached to now <laughs> says that we should move on to the next topic. That's right. Well, I'm already full of sodium from our lunch. Um, all right. Again, not necessarily uh, nerd culture, much like our previous one, but still uh, just an interesting character. And for those few of you that might not have heard this last week, John McAfee uh, hmm. died. So this is how you delete McAfee. Ha ha. 
um, John McAfee, yeah. contrarian, scat aficionado, was found yeah. dead in a Spanish prison of apparent suicide. He died the way he lived, making people say, what the hell? <laughs> he was due to be extradited for tax evasion from the Spanish jail. No one expects the Spanish extradition. Anyway, ha, ha, ha. I'll be back after this bit. Yeah. <laughs> he would rather die than pay taxes. I can identify. No kidding. Anyway, stories rage across the interwebs of his drug-filled orgies. He was 75, so apparently switching from cocaine to bath salts can prolong your life. Anyway, okay, thank you for those really crappy jokes. <laughs> this just, concludes the podcast. Eddie just died inside. All right, so. My soul. So that's my a, soul. <laughs> it's a little bit of pop culture slash nerd culture. Okay, so. Let's get to what are you doing in games, books, comics, movies, TV? Oh, making dolls. transitions now, huh? Yeah. Promoted yourself. How you like me now? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about your eardrums, folks. All right. I really don't have much in the pop culture thing. What about you? You dirty dog. Okay, I have a new comic. Bam, I'm putting it on you today. You're the comic guy. But I've started reading a comic called Coda. Are you familiar? Spell it. C-O-D-A. Oh, no. Yeah. It came out in 2018. It had a 12-issue run, which I love ones that's not still ongoing for five and eight years, but just they did it and they're done. Kind of like I, what I liked about Head Lopper. It seemed like it's like four issues a year. Anyway, it's by Simon Spurrier, who did The Spire and God Shaper. I thought mm. you might know. I have no clue. Use it. I have no idea. Like, he was acting impressed. He was just faking. And Mateus mm -hmm. Bergara of Cannibal and Supergirl. <gasps> anyway, they present a broken fantasy world that's Mad Max meets the Lord of the Rings. In the aftermath of an apocalypse which wiped out nearly all magic from a once wondrous fantasy world, a former bard named Hum, so nicknamed because mm. his standard reply is, hmm, mm. he seeks a way to save the soul of his wife with nothing but a foul-tempered mutant unicorn, actually a pentacorn and his wits to protect him, but he is unwillingly drawn into a brutal power struggle which will decide forever who rules the weird wasteland. Who rule weird wasteland? That's right. Who indeed. So anyway, I'm about four or five in. Sounds familiar. And um, I enjoyed the first three a great deal. And then number four but and five, then. I'm like, eh, I don't know. So if you look at them, I'll be curious to see what you thought. Seems like it loses momentum around four. Like it's just a roller coaster ride. The first, you know, three or so there, and about four or five. I'm like, eh, yeah, I'm kind of fighting through it. Which, I mean, case in point, I got to about five. That was like a week ago, and I haven't picked it back up yet. So you think you'll finish it? I haven't even finished Head Lopper yet, and I really liked Head Lopper. Just every there's, I never had a lull with Head Lopper, but it's I'm busy for one thing and trying to find. I've some. been reading Head Lopper, so that's part of the reason I don't have anything new to tell you. That's cool, but you've went and I really there. haven't been reading all that many comics at the moment. I, know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know where I'm going. Anymore. Yeah, but um, but how far are you into Headlopper now? Jeez, I don't know. I'm at least a story arc ahead of you, which yeah. is four or five issues, I think. Yeah, so I'll have to catch up because I mean, it, does it keep that momentum and pace? Do you, do you? Has it lost anything that deep in? Yeah, it's still good. Cool. Well, that's good. And I, I that guy's. Yeah, I mean, these, this might be, I'm going to give this, finish this, but I want to go back and read Headlopper too, but they're not going anywhere. So Nowhere. any TV or movies that you got any, you watch the movies. Did you watch some bad movies for I us? Was no, I mean, and, uh, no, I was going to try to watch, uh, the new fir first episode of season five of Rick and Morty, but oh, I, yeah. I tried to cue it up the other day and my Hulu went weird or is it on Hulu yet? I don't think it's on Hulu yet. Well, then I can't watch it yet. <laughs> it's on, the very first episode is still on YouTube. I checked it the other oh, day. it's on YouTube. I'll check that out. So man. I've got a link on my Facebook. I didn't know it was on YouTube. Or just go search it on YouTube. Yeah, I have YouTube. On the first YouTube episode was freaking great. Well, that's the a good sign. The opening of, of last season, just to give you some reflections, some looks back, that first half of season four or whatever it was, hey, there were some yeah. real stinky episodes in there. Mm -hmm. So this one I thought was really pretty good. Well, good. That's, it was good. It was return to form or however you want to say. Yeah. And then the back half of the last season was good, too. No, the back half was It phenomenal. just didn't start off very well. And this one mm -hmm. starts off with a bang, as well, they say. Well, that's good. Well, I know that you spoke well of it. Bradley spoke well of it. So that's why I, that after that, I went home that night and tried to watch it. And I didn't think about it being on YouTube, which is weird. So it's not on Hulu yet, but you can watch it on YouTube. Okay. Oh, because Adult Swim put it up. 
Okay. Which is thoughtful of them. They want to we'll give you that first one. You know, first one's free. Set the hook. That way, if you've let your uh, prescription subscription lapse. Yeah. I think I might have to get Hulu Plus back again or whatever it is. Hulu uh, Live. Hulu, oh, yes. Yeah, so you can watch them day and night at day of. All right. Well, that's cool. So we told them. So I'm glad. Thank you for yeah, that's something you've watched. And so, well, here's another one. Okay. We sat down and thought about doing this podcast last week. So we had some of these discussions already. Yeah. So that's why they go by so fast. True. But I did have a listener request. Oh, my. To watch a show, which was Mayor. And M-A-R-E. then with our accents, it's not Mayor. Yeah. It's Meyer? M-A-R-E, Mayor of East Town, oh. which is a murder mystery set in like a, the outskirts of Philadelphia, but it's more of the like small town, not the big city thing. Appalachia or something. I have, I mean, not geographically. I just don't know exactly where they want to be set at in East town, small town, Pennsylvania, right? Okay. Blue collar, yeah. the working class folks, the working salt class. of the earth, salt of the earth. Yeah. just the best. Mm-hmm. And what do you have so to that one was requested by our good buddy Ron, mm-hmm. which is our painting ambassador mm-hmm. of the Long Con, mm-hmm. paint master extraordinaire. extraordinaire. So he said, "Why don't you check that show out? Because you liked Knives Out, mm-hmm. the movie." Yeah. And of course, my wife loves all these murder mystery shows, yeah, or movies, what have you. So we watch it, and you got it's seven episodes. You guys know me. If I start something, you're going to finish it. I got to finish it unless I get out early. Uh If I get out early enough, we're all good. But kind of like if I get past that halfway point, I got to keep going. So I sit there and watch the first episode with my wife. I said, that wasn't very good. (laughs) Do you want to see another one? She's like, "Eh." it wasn't very good either, but let's give it another episode. Sure. We give it another episode. And another. I can tell she has not enjoyed the show. Mm-hmm. I have not enjoyed the show. I said, can we stop? No. <laughs> Let's watch another. <laughs> Keep in mind, there's only seven. This is a version of, of a form of self-torture, but okay. Yeah. There's only seven of them, and now we're hitting number three. Wow. And the thing is, I understand why she would keep watching, because every t- at the end of every episode... The entire episode can be, like, like say, if it's an hour long, mm-hmm. 55 minutes of it can be bullcrap, mm-hmm. character stuff. <laughs> I'm not going to edit it. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. Let me silence know. my phone. All right, go ahead. So, somewhere in this, I was saying something about we kept watching it. Oh, because if it was 55 minutes long, that in the last five minutes, it would be like, aha, so-and-so did the murder. Here is the irrefutable evidence. Boom, this whole thing is done. And in the first five minutes, the next episode. Is why they didn't do it. And then you go through an hour of that. And then the last five minutes, it's like, oh, this person did it. And here's the irrefutable evidence. So you kind of got hooked in like, oh, they caught the guy. But they hadn't. It's really not about a murder. This whole thing is more of about the characters and how much you like them and getting to live in their world and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I hate these characters. <laughs> I hate every single one of them. Which what would make the show better is like, well, I don't really, I don't, the, the, they're aggravating me with this whole mystery thing, but at least the characters are interesting or likable. Sounds like every character is, has not every one redeeming quality. single character. Right. And every character that they mention or talk to or that you spend any time with is going to come back and have something that they did. That's like, aha, it could be them. Mm -hmm. And then it isn't, but everybody it's kind of like, well, they didn't go back and talk to the guy that ran the liquor store. So he's going to have to come up again at some point because you've seen him. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it got to the point around episode four, I think, that in the very first episode, they had made a big deal about her going and buying a terrarium for her kids, grandkids, turtle. Mm-hmm. And I turned to my wife and say, if the turtle doesn't turn out to be the murderer, this show will suck. Because this is the only way now that it can be any good is if the turtle is the murderer. Mm-hmm. Because I enjoy the murder turtle. And in the end. And in the end, was... it 
was the turtle. Yeah, see, there you go. He was listening to loud rock music. Heavy metal. And singing Goodbye Horses. Uh-huh. Goodbye Horses. Oh, anyway. So, highly unrecommended. I'm sorry, Ron. Give me another chance. Give, give me something else good to watch. Yeah. And I'll try and give it a positive review. But that show, I didn't care for it. The critics love it. Sure. So, you got that going for you. If yeah. you watch it and you like it, then you're in good company. So, you're not a big fan. What about Jen? No, she hated it as well. Okay, good. good. She feels like she, I actually asked her if she would come on the podcast just so it wouldn't be me pooping all over this. Mm-hmm. So you'd have another point of view. But of course, she is too shy. Oh. But yeah, she she hated it. But good. we had some good laughs sitting well, there mocking the show. There you go. See, you guys are your own little MS3T. We, yeah. We made our own entertainment. Yeah. That's that's good. As a couple, y'all have that. That's awesome. But I was going to say, this is, I guess there's. I don't want to give you any spoilers in case you watch it, but there is one villain, and I knew immediately that he was the villain because he was blasting Judas Priest when they came in. Oh, gosh. It was like, man, he's listening to heavy metal. That's the art sign of of a bad guy. So. Big big Judas Priest fan. And like, it was like, uh, I don't know, one of the less lesser like radio known where you wouldn't be like, oh, my God, he was blasting out Slayer or Cannibal Corpse or something like that. He's playing like. Uh, breaking the law, breaking, breaking the, the law. law. It's like he's playing the radio hits. I mean, come on, this is CBS level yeah. of evil the villain or something. Was completely wasted. You know? mm-hmm. So, highly not recommended by me. Yeah. But if you hate yourself, check it out <laughs> and let me know. <laughs> well, and, thanks for listening, Ron. It was we yeah. had a good run with you. <laughs> Ron will probably slap me in the face the next time he sees me. I will pay good money if you will. But Ron. if yeah, if you like murder mysteries. This is not necessarily it. There's there's just a murder that's going on around all this character driven soap opera. Yeah, so it's more of like if you like a good soap opera with a little hint of mystery, you know. And it's kind of uh, Game of Thrones esque, really? where you're like, well, first we're going to follow this character. Is that a rape and murder. Yes. <laughs> first we're going to follow this character, then we're going to follow that character, and you're kind of like, ah, I don't care about the Daenerys chapter right now. Yeah. Get back to what I'm trying to watch. I see. Because I don't care about these five so other stupid storylines. Like, this one's going to be mostly about Jim, this new character, Joan, and the next one, this is about Fred or whatever kind of. No, it's all the same characters that kind of got introduced to you, but like. The spotlight of this episode, maybe. Not even that. Okay. No. Hmm. But I mean, it's like you're going to. Here's one for you, semi-spoiler. You spend a lot of time with the daughter, Mm -hmm. and that goes nowhere. Awesome. So it's like, why did we watch that at all? Because it's character-driven. It's like, Mm -hmm. I don't care about these characters. I hate these characters. And there's stuff like Game of Thrones where you're like, I hate these Lannisters, but you still kind of come around to it, or you're you're having fun watching them be so wicked and naughty. No. No. There's no no, enjoyable wickedness and naughtiness to this. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, so it sounds like good. Don't watch The Mayor of Easttown. All right. Um, that would be our suggestion. All right. On Any, HBO Max. Yeah. Any other shows, TV shows, movies, pamphlets, anything you've perused? No. Okay. I wasn't allowed well, to. It sounds like pop culture is going to be. Played a lot of week. Fallout 76. How about yeah. you? Yeah, I've been playing Fallout with my uh, son, Jake. So it's really neat. Is uh, My youngest and I, you know, this it's been a really a neat thing, a way. Uh, for us to connect and I've really enjoyed it in fact I posted on my PS4 where you can share images from it within the game I shared a picture of he and I in our power armor together after we killed like a ton of we're standing on a pile of scorched pretty much it was kind of there's a picture I took of us last night I haven't posted it to the the stream but of because it looked like you were doing the thing where hey let's do a picture the emote and so we all lined up there outside my house and I took a picture Oh, yeah, it's kind of neat. Beautiful. Oh, and speaking of video games, yeah, what a wonderful segue that we've got created here. And role-playing games. Oh, my. Uh, the Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance game ah. was just released, and I have it on the way to my house through the mail. You're a brave man. But it's got some horrible reviews. Terrible. And not that I'm shilling for somebody, but I've got... Yeah, since I'm not shilling for them, since they're not giving me free stuff, I'll just say I have a rental service that ships to my house video games. Mm. So I'm getting to play this quote unquote for free, kind of like you used to get your Netflix movies for free. You Mm. pay a fee for the month, but I'm not buying the game. So if it sucks, I'll turn around and send it right back. So that's the cool part is you get to try. If it's cool, you might go out and buy it. If it sucks, hey, you're not out anything. No skin off your nose. And you're going to give us the unvarnished 
Eddie beat down review. So maybe on the next one. But the thing I was really looking forward to that is because it's got now that it's got some kind of horrible reviews out there. I was going to twist Matt's arm and be and maybe Gary, our buddy Gary, and I love the PS2 version. Maybe your I kids or whatever. Me too. I loved it back in the day. Love, I was love, pumped love, up love for this. It, yeah. And I was like, oh, that'll be our one of our new things. Yeah. When we're kind of getting Cause in a you could make a form FO seventy six again. When yeah. we're getting into a lull here, mm. we'll be able to jump on that and have a great time. Mm. But then the reviews are so horrible. I doubt I'll find anybody to play it with mm. uh, locally. I think you can play it via the internet. Yeah. As well as maybe randoms. I don't know. I'll have to check into that. But uh, they said the single player experience is even worse. Yeah. So who knows? I may, no. may not have a positive it, this is feedback to give because of that. An all too common occurrence. These games are hitting the market that really aren't full fledged. They're, they haven't been polished. They're not complete. You know, and that and it's kind of like, well, I think out there's somebody at the company going, well, we need a return on our investment. Push it out the door anyway. And we're, I guess, do we as players need to draw a line in the sand and go, you know what? We're going to quit buying it. We're not even going to buy it later. It's like you should pre-order have nothing time. to pre-order nothing. We need to come out and be a complete game. You know, well, that's what I said on my Facebook is there's certain games that I just love so much, uh, big time into like monster hunter and dark souls and this, that, and the other, yeah. but you never know because when uh, the shadows never die, when came out from the Dark Souls creators, it's not Dark Souls, and they didn't say it was going to be like it. I really don't care for that game, Sekiro or whatever, mm -hmm. Sekiro. So Watch that one, I would have wasted some money if I hadn't got to try it out first, and that's something that I probably would have been like, oh, that's going to be a day one purchase. I need and it immediately. I love Dark Souls, so... He loves it. I'm just saying, if you think, well, maybe he's being an overly, overly harsh critic. No, you know. Well, pe some people love the game. Some people don't. And I just don't like that new, it's, I don't know, the blocking of Sekiro Shadows Never Die. It's, I can't get into the timing of it, but who yeah. knows? Somewhere down the road, I may give it another try and mm -hmm. be like, oh, it was fantastic. Fall in love with it. So, all right. Dungeons and Dragons, Dark Alliance. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Mm-hmm. What we're going to do today to tie back into this is talk about some of the historical releases. So let's get in our way back machine. Yeah. So it's kind of like starting off this whole thing by talking about this new TSR games. We can go back to the original company that produced D&D, you know, TSR. And then they licensed the, what would you call it, the... The, the principles, concepts of D&D to various you know, gaming companies. You license the property. Yeah, right, right, right. And so actually, even though we're, I think we're specifically going to talk about PC gaming. We're talking about all of it. And we're going to oh, start okay. with Pool of Radiance, the Gold Box series but by SSI. That was not the very first D&D &D computer video game. All right, go ahead. What is it? Yeah, the first Dungeons & Dragons licensed games were made by Mattel for the Intellivision, not PC. Just for you, so it's interesting to note, you would think maybe the very first ones were PC, but they only were kind of almost D&D in name only. So what year was that? Yeah, see? Yeah. Back that, up, back it up. I know, that was the early, mid, that was the early 80s. That was the early 80s, absolutely. Well, Pool of Radiance is 1988. Yep. And that's the gold block stuff, so. Yeah. And what what you know what age are you talking about? What's the eighty eight you said? Yeah, yeah. So the first license for video games based on the Dungeons and Dragons rules were awarded to Strategic Simulations Incorporated SSI in nineteen eighty seven, after ten different companies had applied. Oh, somebody's on Wikipedia. Yeah, SSI won the award primarily because of their broader vision and their experience in computerized wargaming. Okay, yeah. now the license was awarded. Awarded, but they didn't make the game till eighty eight. You're right. You, know. you are welcome. Yeah. And that game would be the gold box pull of radiance. Did you ever play it? Sadly, no. See, there you go. We just wasted your time, folks. Yeah, I know. That's what's sad was I, that's why, sadly, I remember when we talked, I thought, well, sad thing is that we could talk about it, but I, I can't tell you anything about the game. I never, we're going to skim it. through and it's, it's yeah. basically our experiences and which ones that we played. We have played some of these though. Yeah. Yeah. So next up comes Hills Far, mm -hmm. which is another gold box pull of radiance in 1989. Have you played that one? No. I can say that one is also uh, was released on the NES. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Some of these were on the NES. Yeah. I own that. Really? But I 
think I bought it last year and I have never even thought about playing it. It's just sitting in the collection because You're I'm a big, big video game guy mm -hmm. and it's Dungeons and Dragons. So it's like, oh, put that up on a shelf. Yeah. Maybe someday. All right. Curse of the Azure Bonds. Mm -hmm. 89. Secrets of the Silver Blades. That was 90. Champions of Kryn. 1990. Now, these other ones have been Forgotten Realms, but the Champions of Kryn was Dragonlance. So, for what it's worth. Yeah, and I know there should be a Dragonlance one coming up soon that's also on the NES. Uh -huh. But now this brings us to Eye of the Beholder. Did you play Eye of the Beholder? Did not, but that's a wow. classic. And that was on the Sega, the NES, and the Amiga as well. What about the Sega CD? Uh, I see that, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Here's where we read Wikipedia to you folks. I know, it's awesome. But, yes, of course, I, having a Sega CD back in the day, did play Eye of the Beholder on that system. And? Fantastic. I love it. Cool. Uh, by, and this was by Westwood Studios, but so I guess SSI, either what, subcontracted that, or is that a wing of SSI? But I noticed that on, on Wikipedia. Oh, Westwood? Yeah, Westwood. Oh, Westwood is a different one, and yeah. I think one of their claims to fame is uh, Command and Conquer, yeah. Red Alert. Yeah, but the interesting and thing lots is, of other things. See, yeah, but SSI still held the license at this point because if you'll notice, it jumps right back to SSI. Well, yeah, but Hills Far was also done by Westwood Studios. That's right. So it could have been a subcontract thing yeah, or all or, in, or yeah, know. whatever. Okay. But Eye of the Beholder, really good. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of do you want to go back and play these uh, third-person views where you're going through the maze where you're actually in a dungeon and I'm trying to think, I guess would doom be a good kind of example for our younger listeners. Yeah. Cause I'm trying to think of, yeah. If I taught, if I mentioned a uh, wizard, no, um, um, remember the wizardry series castle, what castle Wolfenstein, that uh, would be the better example. Okay. Yeah. So that's what was kind of hot at the time. Mm -hmm. And if you want to go back and play some of these and get that feel, that's a really good game. Mm -hmm. but this is back in the day where you had to stare at walls. Yeah. Do you remember that in some of the older games or did you play some of those that were that old? I, I did play some of those. Yeah. So you'd be going through the dungeon and you just come to a dead end and you're like, I cannot figure out anywhere else to go in this place. Mm -hmm. So your character, your party, since you've got that uh, point of view, is it no, would it be third person or first person? It's first person. First person. Yeah. My bad. So in that, so you're seeing like all the walls in the dungeon. Mm -hmm. So you have to go walk around this entire dungeon or what have you, pushing looking at each wall. and every tile and either just pushing or looking to see if there's a little teeny tiny rock out of place that could be a you button. You over it or something. Like yeah. That. Yeah. But you have to find it. It's not glowing and shining in your face. Like nowadays, they would have something like that where eventually it's all like you've, you've come back here three and four times. Let's throw you a bone. No, back then it was... Uh -uh. And yeah. if you wanted to heal, mm -hmm. you had to rest in the dungeon. And you're going to get wandering monsters, right? And you could potentially get wandering monsters depending on where you rest. And you had enough to have to have enough food to do it. Mm -hmm. Because I think you could starve to death during your rest. Yeah, wow. Well, you just wake up dead. Huh? It's kind of like, how long do you want to rest for? Okay, I hope you had that much food because you're resting until you die or what have you. It's not yeah. like you wake up and go, there's no food. I'm famished or whatever, yeah. And then I guess next is Eye of the Beholder 2, The Legend of Dark Moon. Which I want to think that I have played that as well. But, but it's funny. It, did, it shows that it's only home computer and Amiga. Yeah. I, yeah. So obviously I didn't play that on Sega CD. But mm -hmm. at some point in time, probably in the mid-90s, mm -hmm. I went back and played a lot of the later games it might even be 2000 yeah. i went back and played some of them but wow. we'll see because we they, shall they, see they we'll discuss that some of these later and re exactly them and resold them you know and then i guess next was pool of darkness which was back to ssi again in 91 well we don't have to read the entire list okay, since you're fair. reading it over there too true, true. on your phone yeah where do you get to your next game that you played? Did you play Neverwinter Nights, the gold box edition? Boom. Yep. Neverwinter Nights. There you go. Did you play anything before that? No. And speaking of uh, not reading every single one, Death yeah. Knights of Kryn, though. Yeah. That one was really, I remember when that was like hot poop. Mm -hmm. People just went ape 
for that one. Seemed like I heard good buzz about that one, yeah. Okay, so Neverwinter Nights, the gold box edition. Mm -hmm. The Savage Frontier. Yeah, tell us all about it. Well, it was just weird. It was AOL, Stormfront Studios, and SSI. So it's like AOL was involved. Yeah, it's just weird. Um, And, oh, it was the first multiplayer online role-playing game to display graphics and ran from 91 to 97 on AOL. So it was actually on AOL. So were you on AOL? Yes, I was Uh on AOL. Yeah, definitely. You've got mail. Um, But anyway, yeah, developer was Beyond Software and then publisher was Strategic Simulations. So that must be before, like, Westwood Studio maybe was the developer. Um, And it was for DOS. It came out in 91. Yeah, I mean, it was, I don't, I mean, it was, it was okay. It was all right, (coughs) you know. Thank you for the detailed review, Matt. (laughs) You're welcome. This is why we don't let him do the video game segment, guys. Exactly right. What do you have to say, sir? I didn't play it. So well, then get out of here, man. Yeah. Well, what was it like? Was it first person, third person? Did it look like Diablo? Did it look like what? No, it was it was like your it was like first person and okay. it was like you say kind of going, you know, through the dungeon step by step. But you could have multiple right. people in it. Absolutely. So you yeah. built a party. Did you have any of our notorious names from back then? Did you have like Gary or Alvin in your party? No. Mm-mm. Did you ever party up? Could you play it solo? It was solo play, yeah, but you could play it multiplayer. Well, you played it multiplayer, but you could play it on your home computer solo, sure. Okay, so yeah. did you group up with people? No. Insightful. I know, I know. All right, let's move on down the list Please. without reading them all. I think yeah. the next thing we'll get to is Dungeons & Dragons Warriors of the Eternal Sun on, on the Sega, Sega Genesis. Genesis. Yeah, we both played that one. All right. Yeah. So that one was a mix. And actually, did you know that was Mistara Hollow World? Yep. Okay. Which at the time, I didn't know nothing about that because right. this is 1992. And back to Westwood Studios, yeah, 92. But yeah, I remember um, I had the Sega and I had that game because I was like, ooh, it's Dungeons and Dragons. But I remember when you were doing your home game, the 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 yep. premise that was completely ripped off from the that. world, swallowed it up. I was thinking, hey, that sounds familiar. And later on, you could find, oh, yeah, I, I took that concept from. A yeah. tra- I was very Eternal open Sun. about it. Why not yeah. steal it? Yeah. No, I mean, steal with both it's hands. It's a great opening. It really is. I love the, the shaking screen and, well, you know, whatever. Right in the middle of the hobgoblin attack. But that one, you have a top-down view of the party when you're on the, like, exploration it, it would, world map. What do they call that? I said, Night. I don't know the term for it, but yeah. But yeah, top, not quite top-down. It kind of, from the top and down to one side, kind of, you know, what there's a term. I don't know. That one, because, like, um, I don't know, Diablo, maybe? Yeah, which is a term that I can't think of because I mean actual but top I down think would be that bird's one, eye view, but there's I, not isometric, but ISO something or another. But anyway, but that one almost is a little bit more so because if I'm remembering it correctly, they were pretty flat looking. Yeah, when you got your view. True, true. Yeah, but, but it, it was for its time, and on the Sega, it was fun. I had a lot of fun. And then when that. you were actually in the dungeon, you were back mm-hmm. to the first person, mm-hmm. staring at the stone walls and. Mm-hmm. So it it had a lot in common with Eye of the Beholder. So, hmm. If I had to recommend out of those two for you going back, well, obviously, it'd probably be a lot easier for you to get your hands on Eye of the Beholder. Mm -hmm. But with emulators, you could probably do Warriors of the Eternal Sun fairly easily. Yeah, but there's there's some sites online where you can play some of these old games. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. With, through emulators online. Mm-hmm. But both mm-hmm. Eye of the Beholder and Warriors of the Eternal Sun, both those are really fantastic. Yeah. And if you can go back and play those games, which I don't know if people can now, mm-hmm. just eh, probably. But like I said, having to go through, it's like going back and playing a first edition game now. Mm-hmm. If you started in fifth or something, you'd be like, right. that was fun back then. Yeah, it was. But there's definitely ones now where I'm like, I don't know if I would go back and visit it just because I don't want to do that. Right. And doing your own mapping. Yeah. Sitting there with your paper so you can draw out where you're going in a video game. Mm-hmm. All right. Not my idea. Fine. Let's see. I didn't play a lot of these. I believe right. I played Eye of the Beholder 3 Assault on Myth Adrenor. Oh, my. Which, pretty much the same Eye of the Beholder gameplay. Mm-hmm. Again, it was pretty good, and that brings us all the way up to 1993. Mm-hmm. All right, did you play any of these following games? No. I, of course, played Ravenloft, Strahd's Possession. Duh. 
And that's when the 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 the, the seed was planted. No. Oh. I did not play it in 1994. There was, like you said, there was a re-release at some point, mm-hmm. it was, which yeah. is probably going to be closer to 2000. Mm-hmm. And that's where I went back and played a bunch of these. But yeah. I did play Ravenloft, Strahd's Possession. I can't remember if I played the Aliquidum Genie's Curse. Mm-hmm. I think I played the Menza Branson. I was thinking, I was like, I swear that Menza Branson sounds familiar. Dreamforge. I would like to say I played this Ravenloft Stone Prophet, but I actually went and watched a video of that one, mm-hmm. and I was like, eh, it's not ringing a bell. No, it's been so long. 94, we think, that wasn't that long. That was a long time ago, yeah. But going back to Strahd's Possession, that was really cool, and being a Ravenloft fan, I very much appreciated it, and I we, did, we ended up doing a Ravenloft game up at the club, and I ripped off some stuff from that game, too, to put in there, cool. because that one was a big melding of a lot of different things. There wasn't very much originality to it. It Mm -hmm. was just putting in different parts, and I think it came out really well. But that's a good one. I would recommend you check that out, especially if you're a big Ravenloft fan. Mm -hmm. Uh, Death Keep. Nothing for that? No. Dark Suns Online. No, sir. Descent to Undermount. No. Now, I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. We'd have to look out look up when Diablo came out. Mm-hmm. But I think Descent to Undermount was supposed to be the D&D answer to original Diablo. Probably. Does that sound correct yeah, to you? I think you're right. Let's and I didn't like it. I played yeah. the poop out of original Diablo back in the day. Were you big into the Diablo back then? Oh, I played the poop out of Diablo. But I think Descent to Undermount was supposed to be their answer, and it just didn't catch for me. I can't tell you why. So anyway, do you remember the game Descent that was hot stuff around that time? So it's mm-hmm. so the descent to Undermountain, the descent part of the name refers to the game's use of the 3D rendering engine from the 1995 game Descent. Mm-hmm. So they use the Descent engine to make Descent to Undermountain, mm-hmm. for what it's worth by Interplay. So you know we've like I mean SSI had got the exclusive rights way back when, and then you know you saw they they were the publisher, but different companies did the work. But I think it was around when we're getting close to where maybe SSI didn't have the sole contract anymore. Yeah. So towards the end of 98, mm-hmm. Bioware is making the games and out comes one that we can definitely talk about oh, gosh, Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate that from Bioware, which is a Canadian game company, a couple of doctors or whatever owned it and, uh, or they had their doctorate, but I don't, you know, but man, I'm telling you Baldur's Gate, gosh, I played the poop out of that. And then, I want to think a lot of these games that we're fixing to talk about were reissued not too long ago by Beam Dog, which is yeah, a company right. that they got the rights to them, and they've they, now it's called like Bowder's Gate. Uh, what's the term they use? Uh, uh, enhanced or whatever. All these are called whatever they were the called enhanced before. Enhanced edition. The enhanced edition. And so I don't know. a bunch of these that we're going to be talking about, you can get your hands on and put them, play them on a modern yeah, PC. Yeah, without having to have an emulator. And, but I'm going to tell you, like, I remember we, when we first met Cody, I think we had just started replaying, was it, wasn't, wasn't it the Bowder's Gate enhanced or whatever that were by Beamdog? It was one of these. And we told I Cody. I thought it was Neverwinter. It might've been. It was Bowder's Gate or Neverwinter. Those two really, stand out in my mind as some of the best PC gaming I just ever did. But it was one of these that they had done the enhanced version. We told Cody about it. And I, I remember he seemed to enjoy it. But Did you know that they're isometric games that utilize an isometric point of view? Some examples would be StarCraft, Diablo, Torchlight, Bastion. Uh, a camera that looks at the world with a 45 degree angle of rotation from an overhead perspective. That's so that's what, I, what you were talking I was about earlier. Isometric, yeah, thank you. Yeah, see, so that is, because there's, yeah, there's, anyway, yeah, first person, third person, isometric, yeah. So it's that kind of top down, but tilted back at a 40 degree Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so, so talking about Bowder's Gate, BioWare at this point came along, and man, they really. That was a massive leap forward. And I yeah, think that shift. was under second edition rules. That's probably the first one that was under second edition rules. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because this was around this. This came out in uh, November thirtieth, nineteen ninety eight, and it used a brand new engine, the Infinity Engine, which was something that uh, Bowder's uh, Bioware had uh, came up with. And so it was Bowder's Gate was Forgotten Realms, obviously Bowder's Gate. I mean, if you know your lore, um, and man, that was just such a phenomenal game. Yeah, it was a massive leap forward yeah, in yeah. just RPGs in general. I had a lot of fun. Um, did you play the Tales of the Sword Coast expansion? 
Oh, I played all the expansions. Absolutely. One of the cool things about that was that people could make so many different expansions for it on their yeah. own. So you could be like, oh, did you play this such and such mod or what have you? Yeah. And there were so many good freaking and probably just lost to the sands of time now. Yeah. So uh, this is what I was getting at. So before like SSI, we mentioned SSI was the publisher, but then it was like Westwood or whoever, DreamWorks or Realm or something. It was the one that actually made the it. work. So this is where Black Isle Studios, and again, Black Isle Studios was doing some amazing stuff. So sure, Bioware was the publisher, but Black Isle Studios, they, they, were, both, they, they were both developers here. Well, Black actually, Isle gets to put out the game and actually when in, it gets to Planescape Torment. Yeah, so I will say, I'm going back to the publisher now is Interplay. The developers were Bioware and Black Isle. Anyway, okay, sorry. So there you go. But uh, man, yeah, love that these games. Okay, Planescape Torment. Planescape Torment. Um, and here's what's so it's crazy. Uh, I played Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate Tales of the Sword Coast. I never got to play Planescape Torment. And this is really the plan, the seed for a lot of people that fell in love uh -huh. with Planescape. You know, the city of uh, city I, of doors. Or I really don't like Planescape, but I love this game. Planescape Torment. Which one was, and I love, you had the, that was where these games really set themselves apart. And I'm glad that we're talking, because I'm sparking, like, let me tell you reasons. Everyone said we liked it, but why did we like it? The NPCs that went with you had character. Right. If you, you, it was brilliant. Like if you did something bad, certain characters would break away from you. If you did good things, certain characters would break away from you because yeah, exactly. you had evil characters yeah. that could join you. And, uh, and so they were really rich. They had character. You're smitten. You're gone. I'm smiling because I can't remember their names right now, but I remember there was an evil wizard and an evil rogue that would join you. I Halfway. think in Baldur's Gate. Absolutely. And he and would I be like, them. I can't remember what he that little crazy. character's name was, but the wizard would be, if the um, thief got killed, he, Montagon or something. Yeah, he'd like be that like Montagon. I never cared for you. <laughs> when he died, when he would die, he'd exactly. Be like, yeah, he's evil. He but just I, threw him to the freaking wolves. But I love everybody. Ever played a damn halfling? Played him as a kinder, even before kinders were a thing. Or happy go lucky little sweetie pies or what? Yeah, it's coming out in cats and dogs. But anyway, but I love that this little halfling. No, he was evil, and so um, wow, this is coming on kind of hard and fast. But anyway, um, the halfling. Like they have different things they would say, like preset recordings for like when they, when you do this, like if you would tell the half to do something, he'd be, he'd be like sleep lightly taskmaster. Or when he would charge into battle, he'd be like, let the rivers run red. And you're like, what halfling says that? But he was mm -hmm. an evil he was halfling evil, rogue. Evil, evil, or very evil. And, and the wizard was, but they were both zents. I mean, they were like from a realm that's supposed to be anyway. Yes. Yeah. So no, the NPCs had a lot of character. Yeah. And that's probably the big leap forward too is that instead of all your parent party members are basically you mm -hmm. like in uh eye of the beholder mm -hmm. it's more of a tactical game you're just assigning them mm -hmm. you know your character should be like i'm not doing that or if you do this this is how i react to it or yeah. can i speak to you for a minute yeah and you'd have little side adventures just off that np or that a character yeah, that's with and, you and you would see like we talked about if like say if if you went to include this one character in the party npc about the time you did you didn't get any warning after you did it, this one character would go if you're gonna run with this guy i'm not they would they would leave the party like when you'd rest and go during the night while you're resting the ranger left your party because you know he, he's not going to be in a party with this scumbag or whatever so that was really really that was groundbreaking you yeah. know yeah oh and some weird books when you talk about Baldur's gate did you ever read that yeah. They had some novelizations of the game. Uh huh. Yeah. And 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 talking about like Planescape though, I want to think, like because it was a Planescape, so they had to really kind of make it extra weird or quirky because it's it was um like that you like one of your companions was a floating skull. Yep. Wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What are those called? Floating skulls. No, you guys just fought one the other day. Oh. Is uh, it a? It's almost like a flame skull or yeah or something like that. But it's just trippy to think you'd have one of those as a traveling companion. Well, that's because it's uh, Planescape. Planescape. You yeah. had a succubus yeah. as a traveling companion. companion and, yeah. Uh, your character could not die. He would always keep coming back because he's in the Planescape and mm -hmm. uh, pretty much all the uh, afterlifes or whatever knew not to take you. Your soul couldn't go. Yeah, wow. So you just had to solve the mystery. It's also a game that you could beat on pacifist oh wow if you had enough charisma and all that you could talk, talk your, your way, way out, out of every battle wow. now i tried that 
I never got anywhere with it, mm-hmm. not even close, but mm-hmm. it can be done. Interesting. So definitely check out Planescape Torment. And yeah. again, that's got the remastered edition or enhanced edition, as they're called. Yeah, from Beam Dog. Uh, um, Icewind Dale. Sadly, I don't think I ever got to play this one. Come on, man. But I've heard some really good things about it. I want to say... It was, you know... Uh, Jackson was telling me he was playing it the other day, and he really enjoyed it. Yeah. But that's one that I didn't really like, hmm. because it was more... Hack and slash? Hack and slash. It was yeah. more to the... Not as much interplay from the other characters. Mm-hmm. So, I didn't care for Icewind Dale. But I know there are people that love it, mm-hmm. and probably people looking for a more Diablo-esque experience yeah. in it. Now, all these games took place in Forgotten Realms, and this one was Except one, for Planescape. Um, well, yeah, because, yeah, exactly. But um, but still, that kind of segues in with all that kind of Forgotten Realms stuff. But, yeah, it's Planescape. Um, and, and these go back and forth between Black Isle Studios and Bioware, but I think they were working together. And Icewind Dale came out June 20th. So 2000. 2000. So it came out around this time. Uh, wow, 21 years ago. Man, where does the time go? Um, all right, so next is Bowder's Gate 2, Shadows of Om. Yep, more of the same. Fantastic. Fantastic. It built on it, it, and could it have been better than the first one? Possibly. We'll see one of the takeaways from this that I really loved was, and okay, in, in old school first in D&D, at like 10th level, 9th or 10th level, you became your, that was your named level. And you know I'm getting at where used to in the player's handbook they had like, at first level, you're, you know, a, a warrior. Then you're a Myrmidon. Then you're a gladiator, whatever. And then, like, at level 9th or 10th, you're a fighter lord or whatever or something like that. Anyway, I mean, okay. So, but it's kind of like, again, in that game, it was cool as, as you were playing it, you eventually got a chance where, like, if you you push one character kind of forward as your, like, whatever your primary character, because you had the NPCs that traveled with you. If it was a fighter you would invariably get this opportunity where you would be bequeathed some deed through some task you did. And now you've been given this old fort out in the woods and you mm-hmm. and your retainers have to go settle it and run the monsters out. But after that, it's yours, or at least you're this vassal of a, of a Lord, but you're going to keep that up for him and keep that property safe. But you own your own keep like, ah, that's kind of cool as a fighter. Or if you're the wizard at one point, this sphere, this, sphere from another dimension just suddenly appears in the middle of town and wipes out just blocks and blocks of the town and you're sent by the local constabulary or leader of the town whatever to go figure out what happened what is this sphere where did it come from and and messing around with it you find a way in and inside of it it's like a pocket dimension you fight all these otherworldly extra dimensional weird creatures and you get to fight stuff from like dark suns and uh, anyway, whatever, after you've cleared the sphere out, it becomes your home if you're a wizard. You know, So it was neat that beyond just having the cool NPCs that have their own flavor or something, that was a neat thing. I really love that touch. Which, if you haven't that. checked out Pillars of Eternity, mm-hmm. that's a really good modern one. We're sticking to the D&D games today, but mm-hmm. I will say, specifically since you mentioned that, and especially mm-hmm. like building up your castle mm-hmm. and kind of a way to take all the gold away from you, uh-huh. that one's really good for that, too. Yeah. So that was Bowder's Gate, Shadow of Om. And then there's Icewind Dale, Heart of Winter. Didn't play it. I wasn't that big into Icewind Dale. Dale, so why would you get the expansion? Bowder's Gate 2, The Throne of Baal. Oh, man. Of course. That was cool where you are potentially the son of Baal and you're vying against these other ones or whatever, I guess. And that was again by, that came out in 2001. And that was a great one. And there's Icewind Dale, Trials of the Lure, Lure, Lure Master. And again, didn't play that. Apparently, mm-hmm. I just didn't ever even try the Icewind Dale stuff, sadly. And showing how things kind of come full circle, Pools of Radiance, the ruins of Mithrunor. So they, probably people that had that beloved um, remembrance, nostalgia for Pools of Radiance, Stormfront Studios comes back with that based in Forgotten Realms. It was for Windows in 2001. Did not play that one. Me neither, but of course we played Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. Oh, yeah. That was PS2, Xbox, Nintendo, GameCube, you know, whatever. But yeah, I'm remember, surprised it's on the GBA. Yeah. What the, at Game Boy Advance. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's hard to believe. Yeah. He used the Dark Alliance engine, so we had a new engine there. Man, but I had a lot of fun. I played the poop out of that. Me and my wife had a lot of fun with that since that was a two player game. And what I'm you trying to think what you would doors, compare yeah. that to. Anyway, that's um, cool it almost makes me think of like Gauntlet. 
where you have the multiple players running around on screen. Uh-huh. And back when you played multiplayer games with one screen. But this kind of you're tethered together, like, hey, would you hurry yep. up? You're holding me back. You know, Come closer to me or whatever. Yep. So that one was a lot of fun. And, and that's more of an arcade yeah. style experience. Here it comes. Here it comes. The Mac Daddy. The Big Dog. Never Winter Nights. So not to be confused with the previous one. This was on Windows, Macs, and Linux. Linux. Bioware, Aurora, the Aurora engine in 2002, June. Again, June, man, that's going to be a, you know, yeah. So about 20 years ago, out comes Neverwinter Nights. Man, this game was so cool. I just, I had so much fun with it. I played the poop out of it. That seems like that one was another leap forward just because of the yeah. sandbox aspect of it. There was just so much more stuff to do. The world got so much bigger. Yeah. So this one is an interesting little backstory. So it's a, a, a third-person role-playing video game. It was developed by BioWare. Interplay Entertainment was originally set to publish the game, but financial difficulties led to them being taken over by Infogrames, Grams, whatever, who released the game under their Atari range of titles. It was released for Microsoft Windows on June 18th. BioWare later released a Linux, blah, 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 blah. But the interesting thing was it was supposed to be released by Interplay, but that's about the time Interplay went boobies up or something. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. But yeah, that was such a that was just a great game, man. Loved, loved that game. I I, I played it and played I played it. It's like a lot of times I might play through once as one character type and go, Yeah, I'm good. But this is one where like I went back and played it as a wizard and as a fighter and you know, as a paladin or whatever. I mean, I just really loved that one. Yeah. Anything you'd add to that, sir? No, that one's fantastic. That yeah. one we just were playing it a couple of years ago because that one's still been kept alive so much through the yeah. internet community. Well, wasn't that, they came up with the enhanced version of that beam dog yet, I think as well. And so we got it off steam and we were playing that and comparing notes. I think even Papa John might've heard us talking about it. Didn't he try it? Maybe even Cody. So yeah. Well, what was the one that we were all playing online for a while? That was That's under that. Neverwinter Enhanced, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Because Neverwinter was already a great game on top of that. They released the engine, in a capacity where players could build their own mods and worlds. So there's so many communities and worlds out yeah. there that, yeah, even I, if you've played through the game a yeah. million times, there's more to do. Yeah. Go get your hands on the base game, and you can find so many free mods for it. I played some. There was, In fact, here's what's neat. There were some of these mods that were so well done by some of the people that the company offered. I mean, one guy, I remember, a job. He's like, your mod's so good and the story's so good, we're calling you up to the big leagues. Is your programming is so good and your storytelling is so good, you know? So, yeah. We're an hour in and we still have about 20 years worth of games to okay, cover. so we need to speed up. So just stuff that we know we've played, but that's definitely, we had to mention, I wanted to get to Neverwinter Nights. And honestly, after that... Temple of Elemental Evil in 2003. Yeah. Did you play that one? No. I played that one. Papa John played it since you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. That was a good way to actually get to play through the Temple of Elemental Evil and because who's cool. ever going to sit down and get to run, run the whole thing. It's the, just really difficult. So that one I recommend to you too. And I'm tickled to see one thing as I'm looking at the screen here, finally some games based in Greyhawk. Cause you know, I'm an old Greyhawker. I mean, I have no ill will towards Forgotten Realms, but Greyhawk is my kind of touchstone to when I first got into D and D. So there's a number of titles here, Dungeons and Dragons, Heroes, Temple of Mule, those take place specifically in Greyhawk. So anyway, um, after that, you know, Dark Alliance two. Yep. I see that. More of the same, another mm -hmm. good game. Yep, good stuff. I skipped a bunch of that. Dungeons and Dragons Online. Yep, Storm That sounds Reach. like something you'd be playing. And yeah, oh, I played the crap out of Dungeons and Dragons Online. It's actually really good. It really is. The graphics weren't bad. I enjoyed some of the dungeons. Um, it's online play. These days, I think you can play. It's free to play. And it really is one of those ones that it's not... It is, it is free to play. You have limited access to the dungeons and some of the most fun dungeons you have, you can buy as a, a one-time fee and you have access to it, or you could, you could pay for a month of service and have a lot of fun in that month, you know, and no, no, I, that definitely me, Gary, and some other friends of mine, ex-girlfriends and stuff played that, had a lot of fun with it. That was, dungeons and Dragons tactics on the PSP. I didn't even know that was a thing. I should look into it. Isn't that, that interesting? Sounds, yeah. Yeah. And then Neverwinter Nights 2 in October 31st of 2006. So those many years later, it was by Obsidian Entertainment. Neverwinter Nights 2 was a lot of fun, as was Mask of the Betrayer and some of the other things. Yeah, no, those were those were really fun. I don't remember playing it, so 
Yeah, no, Neverwinter Nights 2 was, was good. It was good. Or maybe was that the one that had the engine where you could build on it? Anyway, regardless, I, all, all, anything that's pretty much says Neverwinter Nights, you know, pretty much good stuff. All right, now we're getting into the enhanced editions. Oh, my. Yeah, and so, I mean, it's just kind of more of the same, you know. Well, this 20 years is speeding by. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's kind of interesting because you get, you know, 20 years of history where there's a lot of classic games, and then it kind of dries up and just becomes enhanced editions. But, but that I, could also tell you the state of D&D during the last 20 years before we get to 5th edition. Yeah, and and, I, and that's what I'll say is, honestly, if you got it right the first time, I mean, the, the, the graphics weren't bad, so they kind of hold up. And but the content was so so good, you'd have to, and it just shows you how much stuff has been rehashed or redone. Because honestly, I mean, th that stuff that Bioware and um, Black Isle did was so good. Mm -hmm. Just reissue it where it runs on current computers and keep on trucking. I mean, you know, yeah. You know. And if you want to get the really old school, like Gold Box and Eye of the Beholder feel, and you don't want to dig those up, there's also the Legend of Grim Rock series, which is a in the same vein kind of of the classic old school D and D games. So check that out. If you, hmm. if you were interested in some of these, but you don't want to try and track them down. Uh, so like I said, that brings us to the enhanced editions mm -hmm. and then Baldur's gate three, which I don't think either one of us have played. Have not. No. And that's why oh, haven't well, you played it? Because it's TBA. No, there's early access right now though. Oh, because um, uh, Cody and Sean, I think, have already played through it, at that's least. That's true, and they were raving about it. I, a lot of times I don't want to do that when yeah. it's like, let me know when it's done. I'll say this. I've, in the day, I would vie and do the thing where you kind of tell them your pedigree. And I'd get picked to be a, a beta tester, but invariably I'd play the game. And I'm the guy that's like, I'm generally going to submit bugs and stuff like that where someone just want to, I'm playing for free or something. But... Many a time I would be so let down by the beta, not, you need to be that guy in the back of your head to remember this is beta. And then I'd go, Ugh, this is awful. Well, no, it's a beta. And then so I'd be put off and then later on the full product come out and I'd hear, oh, it's brilliant. I'd go, ah, eh, it's probably, no, it sucks. I played it. Well, you played it in beta. Now you've got the full pu published, polished product. Oh, it's great. You know? So now I'm kind of like, call me when you've got it done, you've got it out and then I'll play, you know, that's yep. where I am anymore. But here's, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons, Dark Alliance, Baldur's Gate, Forgotten Realms, PC console on, how do you pronounce that, games? T-U-Q-U-E? Anyway, two, 2021, so that's that's due to be out any time now. That's what we were talking about earlier. Oh, Dark Alliance is out now. Oh, it is out, okay. Yeah, it's on the way to my house. Oh, yeah, but what's the, you know, the, the game oh, no. Yeah, I can't pronounce that. But there, Q. But there were other games that were put out but they didn't use the actual game mechanics they just simply had the name and that was like i said back in 1981 so i did say in the early 80s that's when the dungeons and dragons computer fantasy game came out for like mattel actually that was which on, that must have been kind of like one of those tiger electronics yeah, games if you that, can yeah, remember little, that even little handheld lcd and then it was 82 is when the intellivision and i and think i actually have that game i owned it and it's Oh, it's terrible, but I mean, look at the time and what was available. And here's interesting. Apple II has Dungeon! Exclamation point. Kind of like the board game, I guess. Mm -hmm. I've got Heroes of the Lance, I'm pretty sure, for the NES. Yeah. U.S. Gold. Dragon, yeah. Anyway. But yeah, man. So there's been a lot of stuff. I mean, gosh, this list goes on of stuff that doesn't actually use the, yeah. you know, the game. Iron mechanic. and Blood, the Warriors of Ravenloft. Do you remember that one? No. That was around the time of the Mortal Kombat Street Fighter fate. Uh, craze sure. so that's where they tried to get their cut of that yeah but they slapped D, &D on it figuring the people that might buy it because it's D, &D not because it's they want to play a fighter yeah and then there's lords of Waterdeep in 2014 interesting i wonder if that's i don't know ios android play deck and then dungeons and dragons dice adventures is to be announced soft launch or something i don't know weird but yeah, so there's a lot. I mean, there's well, a for lot. For your iOS and Android device. Yeah. And then, oh, well, here's, here's a list online. Neverwhere Night, Savage Frontier, Forgotten Realms. That was DOS. That was DOS back in 91 from Storefront. So there's been an online presence all the way back to 91 for D&D &D as an online game. Dark Sun Online. 96. If you had AOL. Yeah. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons Online from Turbine. 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 Yeah. And that's the one I've played. A lot of fun. Dungeons and Dragons Tiny Adventures. 
came out in 2008 for Facebook. Okay, never played that. Heroes of Neverwinter came out in 2011. Again, Forgotten Realms, Facebook. Uh, Neverwinter. This, that one came out in, uh, what was that? 2013 from Cryptic Studios. And finally, Warriors of Waterdeep came out in 2018 for Android and iOS. So those, some of them have been phone games or something. But now I'll tell you that, honestly, give Dungeons & Dragons Online a whirl. I had a lot of fun with it, man. I had a lot of fun. Um, one of the things that we didn't talk about with these games, too, that was different than others is a lot of them you could import characters. Oh yeah. Like once you played um Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate you, one, you, you could bring him into two. But I they even that. did that back in the day for some of the like Eye of the Beholders. Really? So yeah. Cool. Way back in the day you got to roll up your character and you I think you could keep rolling until you were satisfied with your stats after you had cheated enough. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh I remember like crap. And yeah. then you could actually carry your characters forward, which is something I miss now in the days of you know, part one, two, and three of games, you get the trilogies, but you don't get to start with all your gear. And I mean, like say Dark Souls, for example, yeah. you don't get to carry those over because those aren't in order. They're not in sequence yeah. for something that's going on. But one thing I love is back in the early days of some of these games, it was for the advantage of the, I mean, the computers were a thing and the internet was a thing, but the internet was in its infancy. So there wasn't all these millions of cheater sites with Easter eggs and all that stuff, but it was oh, cool yeah. how some things would get shared around and knowledge or you found something or your buddy found it would tell you about it. But the, I think the people that made Bowder's Gate, the designers wanted to be able to like, they even knew in, in early D&D, &D, it's based off second edition D&D &D rules. You have so few spells and it sucks to playing a wizard. It's like, God, I want some more castings. And they wanted to keep it close to or pure, um, to second edition D and D, so you had you, you know you had very few castings, but very on in Bowder's Gate there was a spot where if you you wouldn't know this, but if you just cursed around, and you, it was a really tight, what would you call the thing where you have to cursor to find it? But somebody somewhere once once been just swinging their cursor and went, oh hey, what was that? And then there's a ring you can find, and I mean it's on the grounds on this, you know, I mean it's, but if you found it, it was a ring of wizardry. Mm -hmm. A ring of wizardry, you could essentially have it like level two or three. Well, you slap that on and suddenly your number of spell slots for like first, second level spells doubles. So it's like, we it doesn't suck as much to be a, a low level wizard. And so the idea was, I think there was some cheater thing where you could take that character that just got that ring and reload it and then go get that into a new game. Go get that ring again. And now you've got, you could have one ring per hand at first level. You might have six, seven magic missiles. Now you're cooking, you know, yeah, I mean, really. But, but I remember now, I mean, if that was in a game, everyone would know about it day one. But back then, like, not everybody knew that. But I found out about it and was like, hot dog, yeah, you know, so. Well, yeah, I that's probably around like that. the time when all the, like, game facts and stuff, kind of getting into the early to mid-90s, mm -hmm. when you could just go and print out all the cheat stuff, too. Like, mm -hmm. here's the complete guide, and some of those games... You needed it. You need that guy. Like, I'm never in a million years going to find that one tile yeah. through this whole dungeon that I need to press on. Or you're not going to find the really super cool item that's going to make your life fantastic, like that yeah. wing of wizardry without it. Yeah, yeah. And so it's like you say, it's neat how that became like a whole cottage industry where there's companies that their whole thing was building these, these game guides, you know. Yeah, but it's interesting that you can kind of have a 5th edition D&D &D experience right now with the Baldur's Gate 3. But if you want to go back to the old days and see how that was too, just like pulling out your first edition books or the Osric books, you can pull out those old get, uh, gold box games or mm -hmm. Legend of Grimrock and see what it was like. And I want to think, now didn't... See some, what we used to call fun. Didn't some of these latter games eventually use 3.5 D&D or am I crazy? Oh, yeah. I think the second Neverwinter used 3.5 yep. rules. So again, if you like 3.5, great. If you, if you don't, maybe not. But when again... If you were like, well, I, I wouldn't mind a taste to see what 3.5 was like, go play that Neverwinter 2. The real question is the one that everybody says is the most video game MMO-like 4th edition. Was there a game that actually used 4th edition rules? <laughs> Probably, but I don't know what it was off the top of my head. No, me either. And it's kind of ironic. That was one that people say, yeah, is the most like a video game. And there wasn't a game that would have been the easiest one to emulate as a game. So it's kind of funny. But, uh, but yeah, definitely, like I said, pound for pound, Neverwinter Nights, best money I ever spent on a video game because I played that through so many times. My ex wife played it through so many times. And then when I discovered there's a place called like Neverwinter Vault, that was what it's called. 
and it had all these freebie mods you could play that added more hours of content for just free mods. And there was a ton of them. They're still out there. I think there's one for Neverwinter Nights 1 and 2, I think, maybe. But anyway, but also that's where people have made whole gaming worlds, like little online. And we played on one of those for me, you, and Gary for, what was it, three, four, five months? I mean, we got, and it was free. And we had a ton of fun. But we finally got really high level, and it just kind of bogged down and got well, stupid. Well, it got really hard. Well, that too. It kept up with you when you're like, yay, I can smoke everything. No. They would show you, no, no, you can't. But it was neat because I can remember Eddie would be, you know, here at home, you know, doing his chores, doing everything. But I'd be at work. I'd get on the evening. He'd go, hey, just here's a heads up text. The next part of the riddle <laughs> is, you know, Dark Knight or something. But this guy in this world to unleash these certain, unlock these nodes in the world that lets you progress your character and do certain things, you had to have figure out these the, the answer to the riddle or whatever, you know, and this guy was over here cracking the code, you know, of each of these nodes and we'd find the locations of them exploring around. It was, it was it saved you a little time. Absolutely. You could go right back into the meat of it. Yeah. I appreciate it. I'd come on for work and boom, I'm on to the next node, but I'm just saying is think how we're talking about this now, how much fun me and him and Gary had. I mean, Gary and he developed some character skills where he could craft magic items or something. Mm, Gary's we were, always the crafter. Yeah, we're glad that like this guy's breaking the codes and, and, uh, and Gary was crafting all the cool gear for us. And then again, this was completely free content. Yep. Yeah. And so there's some of these, 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 uh, ongoing game worlds that people have kept going for years. There's a number of them. Yeah. There's a lot of this that a you can get for it's dirt free. cheap yeah, yeah. and just have, an unfathomable amount of time in, of entertainment. Because you can still get your hands on the game, uh, this, the, the, the Neverwinter Nights 2 game from like yeah. Steam or somewhere. So go buy it, download it really dirt cheap. I, the the, the get base game with the four expansions it had for like nine ninety nine, and then you can go play on these free worlds once you've... And also, the base game story is a That's lot good. of fun. Yeah, so... One of the best ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely worth, worth your time. And if you never played them, you're welcome. So... Yeah. This is where you can give us a bunch of feedback. Yeah. So what was the first D and D game that you played? What's mm -hmm. your favorite game? And Are why? you looking forward to the new uh Dark Alliance? Have you played that? Does it stink? Is it great? You intend so, to play it. Yeah. All right. Well thanks everybody. We appreciate y'all as usual for listening. And I can tell by the clock on the wall. We're all out of hit points. Ah.